Hey, we're going to get right into the material. We are going deep today covering false humility and in short predestination and all of that cool stuff when it comes to your self identity. So let's get right into the show. All right, really excited about today. We are covering self identity, false humility, and what predestination looks like in our life through the Spirit of God, through the Word of God. So we're starting with Philemon 1 and 6. And it says in the King James that the communication of thy faith may become effectual by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. So in short, a lot of people like to play the background, but false humility shows up by, um, in short, the spirit of fear or the spirit of timidity. But we know through 2 Timothy 1 and 7 that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind, all right? And so a lot of times what it will show up like uh, with false humility is a lack to take leadership roles or a lack to um, get into the spotlight. Uh, being like, oh, I don't want all that attention on me. I don't want all that um, them eyes on me. I'd rather be a supporting cast or a role, or I don't want to do YouTube. I don't want to do the show. I don't want performance or whatever. That's just not me, all right? Number one, biggest thing that we're gonna cover today, it is not about you it's literally not about you because if God we are called um, vessels of clay right we are either vessels of honor or vessels of dishonor but in some translations that we are either vessels of honor or vessels of regularity like regular or whatever right so if he wants to use your clay behind to glorify himself you diminishing whatever he has put into you, uh, being a vessel of clay, if he has put gold or silver in you and your giftings or whatever, and then you want to downplay it, again, you are made in the image of God. This is seen in the book of Genesis, that you are made in the image of God. So by downplaying um, your image um, of him in you, is actually pretty demonic and satanic because the, um, devil is called an accuser of the brethren he's an adversary and he is a tormentor right and so you'll have some gift and be like ah it's not that important ah, i don't need a turn ah, i just want to um, be a servant i just want to play second fiddle so that god is not magnified in you but this is what the um bible talks about in the book of romans um 8 28 that Many are called, but few are chosen. So what if the Lord legitimately chooses you, right? Um, and he has put this in you. And again, I'm not saying this is for everybody because a lot of people want to make um, general um, sweeping statements, right? Generalities are very dangerous because um, you'll, be like, you'll watch this video and be like, oh, he's talking about me. Um, I knew I shouldn't have put that business down or stop that blog or stop that YouTube channel, but you're actually building empires that God's not even in, all right? So that's why you need spiritual discernment to read your Bible, pray and fast so you can apply these scriptures practically, all right? Um, but uh, when it comes to the scriptures, it says, um, many are called, a few are chosen, and all things work to the good of those who love the Lord are called according to his purpose. All right, so if you are called according to his purpose, you have to do uh, what he says. And that is in Ephesians 2.11. All right, so correction, it's not Ephesians 2.11, it's Ephesians 2 and 10. In the King James, it says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them, okay? And so what that means is that anything that you're good at um, naturally, supernaturally, um, or grace to do um, by faith is by Christ's finished work, right? Because Jesus being God, God being the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, knew 
the entire universe, all of time, all creation, before the world was already made, all right? So whatever he put in you as a vessel of clay um, was already put in, already put into motion. It was already um, successful before his time, all right? And so you have to acknowledge that if you're failing or if you're fumbling or you're messing up or whatever, the Lord already knew you were going to mess up before you mess up. You just didn't know that. And so that's um, the foresight because God is all powerful. He is all knowing and he is um, omnipresent, right? So he stands in the past, the future, and the present all simultaneously. He knows, um, in short, like your life is kind of like a GPS. Like he, <laughs> there's a um, permissive will and his perfect will. His perfect will is a straight line, but we mess it up, right? Um, but his grace already accounted for that beforehand. And so we just don't know that. We don't know that all things work together truly to the good of those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. So he already, just like a GPS, rerouted us, but we are just, we just don't have that foresight. But we could, depending on our level of grace given to us, because his finished work is already perfect. His righteousness has already worked this in us. But we just have to get in tune and get access through faith, um, which is available through us, I mean, to us by Christ Jesus. But you're gonna check out something very cool in um, this next section. All right. So we're going to 1 Corinthians 4, and this is Paul um, talking, and it's really interesting because he's talking about judgment, right? Let a man so account of us as uh, the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required to st in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgments. Yea, I judge not my own self. For I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified by, but he that judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Okay, all right, so right there is a lot in context, but um, check this out. Uh, in that section, it says, hey, I don't even judge myself. So the Bible definitely says, um, judge with righteous judgment. So walk circumspectly unless you fall into um, other sins that you're judging other people of, right? So um, you're allowed to judge, right? But what Paul says here is, hey, I don't even judge myself because um, things that are hidden in the darkness, I need counsel to manifest in the heart, right? And so we are vessels of clay, essentially, that says that we have precious treasures on the inside of us. We just need access through grace, right? So again, if you are fumbling and you're messing up and you're just failing overall, the Bible says don't judge yourself before it's time. And this is in Matthew 13 as well, talking about the wheat and the tear. That when they grow up together, you're not going to be able to distinguish um, the two from one another because they look very similar. And so Paul says like, hey, I don't even judge myself because um, the Lord is the one that works and wills all things on the inside of us, right? So you desiring to read your Bible, you're desiring to uh, um, live holy, you're desiring to fast or pray. If you are failing in these areas, it's all the spirit of God that even makes you want to long to succeed in these areas in the first place, all right? So we see this in the Bible as well. So that is 2 Timothy 3.13. Oh, no, that's not it. <laughs> but actually it is that 2 Timothy <laughs> um, 2.13, right? So it says, if we believe not, yet he abided faithful, he cannot deny himself. So what does that mean if I'm like, hey, <laughs> if we are not faithful, he is faithful, he cannot deny himself, right? So when you're born again, you're regenerated, you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, 
the Holy Spirit is on the inside of you, all right? So what you have um, at play that's always a war or whatever is the flesh and the spirit, all right? So it says that the spirit is willing and that's the thing that w wins out in us. And, um, but the flesh is weak. So um, if you're talking about what powers are going to win out and rule, the spirit is willing. God cannot deny himself. So if um, God lives on the inside of you, ruling on you because Jesus is Lord, his lordship and his sovereignty ruling over you, it will yield in you, right? It says one plants another waters, but God gets the increase. This increase in you is nothing of you. It's all of the grace of God in his finished work in Christ Jesus um, already done. And now I don't want any hyper grace messages here. It says, um, faith without works is dead, okay? But you're not justified or saved by your faith, um, um, by your works. You are saved by grace through faith. But evidence that you actually have faith and grace is working in your life is the works that is produced. And that is the fruit of the spirit, all right? So everything needs to be spirit-led, spirit-ordained, and God doing this thing um, in your life, all right? And so, all right, so we just wanted to um, see what's happening in the spiritual realm when you um, discount um, what's on the inside of you um, that's in Christ Jesus with false humility, um, which is just um, basically the sin of pride or unbelief or um, fear, all right? So this is coming from the book of Jude. Um, there's only one chapter. And I actually want to talk about, let's start with verse three. Behold, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unaware who were before of old <laughs> ordained this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of God into lavishness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So look what's happening right here that condemnation um, creeps in, right? And denies God, right? Uh, we are not inherently God, but when we are born again, um, we embody Christ likeness through his word, um, sanctifying us and consecrating us, um, which is in short, is making us into his image. Um, so we are in the image of God, but we need to be in his likeness, in his character, in his power, in his nature, in his authority, all right? I will therefore put in your remembrance, though, ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. Okay? So that's a very important section. Um, unbelief, <laughs> pride, um, trying to um, discount or discredit. But also, people just don't like responsibility. If you have to um, acknowledge that you have um, these talents. Um, you, you see the parable um, with Jesus. He said he gave one man one talent, one man five talents, and one man 10 talents. The five and 10 multiplied that. And because they were good stewards over a little, he trusted them with much. But some of us don't like responsibility. Some people um, discount what they have in them so that they don't have to have that type of responsibility but you're going to be like that foolish man who hid his talent in the ground yielding nothing and the lord called him woe unto you like you, you wicked servant um essentially so if god puts something in you and you don't even steward one well because you're like i have one only but this other person has like all these other cool things um i'm not that important the lord will judge you just as um if you have five or you had 10 talents. And if you put talents into modern times, if you have silver as a talent, it's like $300,000. But if you have gold as a talent, that's 
it's, it's around like one million to like three or four million dollars, right? So if you have a gold talent on the inside of you, one gold talent is an investment of three or four million dollars. He's like, yo, if you actually put that into the bank, um, you would have had great, got a greater yield versus you just hid that thing. So you don't want that to be hid in you because of unbelief. And the sin of unbelief is just discounting uh, what you are, what you're supposed to do, and you stewarding um, your gifts well. As you are trusted and faithful over a little, um, refining, preparing, um, preparing, and using it in your little responsibility, then you can be trusted over much. Um, so don't negate responsibility or hard work or effort by being like, ah, my, my stuff isn't that important, or being lazy. All right, but I actually want to jump down. I think it's um, verse ten. Um, it just talks about <laughs> all these people getting in trouble with God. If you want to read those sections, but these speak evil things which they know not, but what they knew naturally as brute beasts. In those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, ran greedily after the era of Balaam for reward, and perished in gain, saying of Kor. These are spots in the Feast of Charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear. Clouds that are without water, carried about winds, trees whose fruits were, <laughs> were <laughs> without fruit, twice dead, plucked up of roots. Wage, <laughs> raging waves of seas, foaming of their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. Okay? I know it's a lot. Um, we're gonna try to break all this down, all right? Um, verse 10 talks about um, what happens when you perceive things naturally. You corrupt yourself, all right? So if you try to downplay as like, Oh, like the Bible definitely says um, if you want to be master of all be servant of all so that's true right but if you try to perceive yourself naturally before it's time right just like the Bible says then you actually corrupt yourself by discounting um, through the natural mind because the natural man cannot perceive spiritual things so if you measure yourself before your time being like hey I keep messing up or whatever whatever the grace available to you um it's not discounting because grace is perfect but um you you actually align yourself verbally or in mental um uh, with the antichrist and with the demonic right it says like woe unto them because they go in the way of cain and cain had an imperfect sacrifice a sacrifice that was not pleasing to god and so by discounting yourself with false humility, you are providing God with a ill-fit <laughs> ill sacrifice unto him. Because you're, um, because you're not doing the fullness of all of those treasures on the inside of you being a vessel of clay, you actually are giving him like lesser because of fear, unbelief, laziness, lack of responsibility, all that stuff, all right? And then it just goes <laughs> into all this bad stuff that happens um, by you doing this and you perish at your core, okay? Ooh, at your core. All this stuff that's on the inside of us, all right? Um, almost done, I think I have two more verses. No, I do not. <laughs> Add one more verse and then we are done. Um, with all this false humility um, talk, all right? I know I'm jumping around, I'm making a lot of connections, but in short, um, the overall theme of this video when it comes to acknowledging false humility is in short, you're made in the image of God. The Holy Spirit ch uh, transforms, sanctifies, cleanses, trains you up in his likeness. So what you can do um, by be made in his likeness is steward those gifts well. And just like Paul was saying, don't judge yourself before it's time because you're going to judge naturally spiritual things. The grace of God will empower you. Like if I judge Paul when he was Saul, 
naturally I'd be like, ah, God's not gonna use him. And then I would have discounted him. And then all those amazing things he did, all those miracles, healing, leading people to Christ would have never happen. Same thing happens in your life, right? And so this is where we're gonna end with, um, with Matthew 21 um, and Jesus speaking. Oh, actually, let's just start with um, verse 25. Um, this is Jesus getting um, challenged by the Pharisees and him rebuking them. The baptism of John, he's asking a question. Whence was it from? Whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, why did ye not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. Interesting. And he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But at the word he repented and went. And he came to the second and said, Likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir, and went not. Whether them twain did the will of his father, they say unto him, The first, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and ye believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterwards, that ye might believe him. Okay? So, in short, um, how does this apply to us? Um, you have the Pharisees who did not believe and repent. And you have um, these two sons, one who said, yes, God. <laughs> well, yeah, God's our father. Yes, God, I would do this thing and did not versus one who said i will not do it repented and did the thing all right so likewise the lord's telling us to do a whole bunch of stuff um we're not saved by works but we're saved by grace through faith and it's like hey i will show you your faith by your works so this is the challenge um with this verse that i'm giving unto you will you repent and um do as the lord tell you to do so any business, any ministry, any um, blogs, any stewardship when it comes to money or giving, will you repent, um, humble yourself unto the Lord, and um, go <laughs> and do it. Um, in short, um, don't diminish your gifts. If God wants to glorify you, how? if God wants to glorify himself in you however he wants to, it's not about you. It's not about how it looks. It's not about what you want or do not want to do. Just do it. All right. Um, humble yourself and he gives more grace to the humble. That's where I want to leave it um, there today. Um, remember, that's the gospel of Jesus Christ that God um, through um, Jesus, his son, has come into the world through his death, burial and resurrection to save us from our sins. For Jesus will come to judge the world either giving us eternal life or eternal damnation. So um, make sure you are making disciples. I'll come back next week, every Wednesday and Sunday, 7 p.m. Like, comment, subscribe, new videos.